I tell you what, she may be the new face of courage this morning after enduring 30 separate surgeries to reconstruct her face. She underwent the first face transplant in this country just five months ago. Let's take a look again at the photo of Connie Kopp before she was shot in the face in an extreme act of domestic abuse. But now she can talk again, she can eat, uh, she can even learn to smile, which she's beginning to do. And she's stepping forward, showing her face for the first time, paying tribute to those surgeons. And even though some of the pictures you're about to see now are medically graphic, she'd be the first to ask you not to look away. Coming forward for the first time since the groundbreaking transplant five months ago, Connie Culp, shy, generous, began to tell her story. Well, I guess I'm the one you came to see today. <laughs> um, my name's Connie. I was shot. I don't know if anybody knows that, but I was shot. A 46-year-old mother of two from Ohio, her husband shot her in the face, then turned the gun on himself. Both survived, he going to jail, she blind with a shattered jaw, shattered cheek and nose. She was not able to eat solid foods. She was not able to drink from the cup. She was in tremendous pain. Because of the transplant, Connie can do those things, return to a normal day. You might get in a car wreck and think you're beautiful one day. So don't judge people it's, don't look the same as you do. Because you never know. One day it might be all taken away. It has been called the most complex facial restoration in the world. A 22-hour marathon transplant. Surgeons replacing 80% of Connie's face. Everything except for upper eyelids, forehead, lower lip, and chin. This was Connie before. This, how she looked after the attack. This Connie today, and this how doctors believe she will look when the restoration is finally complete. Her facial muscles don't all work. Facial nerves grow slowly, about an inch a month. But her spirit, completely intact. Dr. Johan, I met him five years ago. He wasn't sure if he could fix me, but he tried. Well, here I am five years later. He did what he said. I don't mean my nose. <laughs> After 27 surgeries, the road ahead is long. But the biggest prize for Connie and her doctors, how far she's already come. She eats hamburgers and enjoys her pizzas. She's able to walk on the street without being called names. And by the way, one of the reasons Connie will need an additional fairly routine surgery to pull up the skin here is because doctors want to leave it loose in case there's swelling. And just moments ago, I, I spoke with Dr. Frank Pepe, who was part of that eight-person surgical team, but performed the unprecedented surgery. He joined me from Cleveland. Good morning, Dr. Pepe. This was a monumentally difficult surgery, we know, and a monumental achievement. How did you choose her? Uh, Connie actually came to us. Um, she, as you know by now, had a tremendous amount of trauma from a gun blast injury to the face. And we had been treating Connie for previously four to five years. And so Connie knew that we were doing some uh, experiments on face transplant and asked, asked us to participate. And again, as I understand, she couldn't eat, she couldn't talk on her own. And recently, she's been doing the treadmill, she's doing push ups. Yeah. Uh, Connie's personality uh, has a lot of fortitude. She. Uh, she uh, is in better shape now than probably I am. Uh, she, uh, she has a great personality, and we couldn't have picked a better patient for, for this uh, very, uh, um, um, basically, experimental surgery. And is it true a great benchmark of achievement and triumph was a sneeze? <laughs> exactly, a sneeze and a smell. She loves hamburgers and pizza. And uh, right after surgery, uh, when she was fully awake from the anesthesia, uh, one of our residents uh, gave her a piece of gum because she wanted to smell spearmint gum. And when she said, I could smell the gum, we knew we had a success. A lot of questions people have, and some of them I know are just lay kinds of questions. For instance, how much in any way does she look like the donor, and what can you tell us about the donor? 
We had performed some previous uh, experiments looking at uh, donor tissue and uh, putting it on other like cadaver-like uh, specimens. And the, uh, the patients could never exactly look like the donor. What it is is, is a composite. They look part like the donor and part like what they used to look like, but nothing exactly one or the other. It's something in between. How nervous were you? going into this. Did you know you could do it? We knew we can do it. We had been planning this for five years and actually had been working specifically on Connie's case for uh, the previous four to five months before the transplant. But there was like a rocket launch. There were certain go, no go points. Connie had 30 previous surgeries or about 30 previous surgeries beforehand so there was a lot of scarring and once we decided that the neck vessels were clear we had a sort of a collective sigh. And then the other crucial point was is when we did attach the donor face to Connie's face, we clamped all the vessels so it was very pale and cadaver-like. Once we released the clamps and the vessels in the neck were allowed to flow into the face, it pinked up and Connie got rosy pinks immediately. So at that point, there was another collective sigh. Did you say something to each other in the operating room? Well, we couldn't do, we couldn't do high fives because we all had surgical <laughs> gloves on, but we kind of did a, a potential high five. And when you look at her, what do you think? Uh, I look at Connie and I listen to Connie. And Connie has an incredible story to tell. And I think this, uh, this surgery is gonna allow her to tell that story. Her story, tragic and yet so much strength she has yes. shown emerging from it. We thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. And one additional note, there's always a chance that she can still reject the transplant, but doctors say every month that has gone by gives them additional optimism and hope.